All right. Get the right page up here. Welcome back. Last Sunday was Easter. Can you believe it was just last Sunday? Traditionally, Easter is the most well-attended service of the year. We saw, we saw lots of people last week. This Sunday is the first Sunday after Easter. Traditionally, it is the least attended service of the year because people feel like they've done their duty by coming on Easter, I guess. But I'm glad you're here this morning. We're going to talk about what a life of faith looks like after Easter. We're going to talk about faith this morning. How many of you think you know what faith is? A couple. <laughs> Caught you off guard there. We throw the word around a lot, don't we? But do we really understand what we're saying when we say the word faith? Augustine, the great saint of the church, said that faith is to believe what we do not see, and the reward of faith is to see what we believe. In the Bible, Hebrews 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. In Greek, the word that is used most often for faith is pistis. The, the definition in Thayer says, Conviction of the truth of anything, belief, in the New Testament of a conviction or belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things, generally with the included idea of trust and holy fervor, born of faith and joined with it, and relating to God the conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ. And related to Christ, faith is a strong and welcome conviction of belief that Jesus is the Messiah through whom we obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of God. In the religious beliefs of Christians, faith is the belief with the predominant idea of trust or confidence, whether in God or in Christ, springing forth from faith in the same. Fidelity, faithfulness, these are words that run parallel to the word faith, and it is the character of one who can be relied on. That's faithfulness. There's a story of... One night, a house caught on fire, and a young boy was forced to flee to the roof. The father stood on the ground below with outstretched arms, calling to his son, Jump! I'll catch you! He knew the boy had to jump to save his life. But all the boy could see, however, was flame, smoke, and blackness. As can be imagined, he was afraid to leave the roof. But his father kept yelling, Jump! I will catch you. But the boy protested, Daddy, I can't see you. The father replied, But I can see you, and that's all that matters. That's what faith is, taking that leap of faith, knowing that God sees us. Jumping into something you cannot see for yourself simply because God is calling you. The Aesop saying, look before you leap, is not a Christian idea with regards to faith. When walking in faith, often you have to leap before you can see to look. The African impala can jump to a height of over 10 feet and cover a distance of greater than 30 feet. Yet these magnificent creatures can be kept in an enclosure in any zoo with a three-foot wall the animals will not jump if they cannot see where their feet will fall. Faith is the ability to trust what we cannot see. Our reading today is 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. Let me share it again. We're talking about the post-Easter faith. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, 
that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The passage begins with a great exclamation of what God did by raising Jesus from the dead. It begins with the barakah, the Jewish form of blessing that begins, Blessed be God, who? We see it also in many parts of the Bible, but listen to this from Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. From our passage, 1 Peter 1, 3 says, By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. New birth, born again, born from above. Ideas that intermingle, as we saw last week, when we talked about setting our minds on the things above. Living hope equals resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, verse 4 says, And into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Inheritance reminds us of Israel's inheritance of the Holy Land. But this inheritance cannot be taken away, taken over, or otherwise revoked, because it is kept in heaven for you, for safekeeping. It is under God's protection. We can't blow it. 1 Peter 1.5 says, Who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Our inheritance is being kept in heaven by God, kind of like a trust fund, like a faith fund. We cannot touch it because it is under God's protection. Salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. 1 John 3, verse 2 says, Beloved, we are God's children now. What we, wa- what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. Then it moves into a little reality. 1 Peter 1, verse 6. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you've had to suffer various trials. The trials Peter's readers were suffering had to do with the Roman persecution of Christians under Emperor Nero. Living torches in Nero's gardens, ripped apart by wild animals to the cheers of the Colosseum crowds. The same word is in the Lord's Prayer translated temptation. Our trials are not nearly as severe, but we do go through trials of our faith, testing temptations to see how real our faith is. Faith that cannot stand the test is not real faith. 1 Peter 1.7 says, So that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Faith made real, or at least tested, for genuineness. While it is not indestructible, it can stand the test. Metal that is tested by fire is being purified, The ore is melted and the metal is separated from the impurities that go along with it. So the stuff we go through that tests our faith really is purifying our faith if we are cooperating with God through it all. So that at the end, our faith may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Then it talks about faith. 1 Peter 1, 8 and 9. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice in an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. We can't see Jesus with our eyes, so our life is by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 6 and 7 says this, 
So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Those who are in love with Jesus rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as they perceive him. It's a strong emotion. Last week as we sang the closing hymn, Because He Lives, I had a very emotional moment The Spirit touched my spirit, and I was overcome with tears. When we are worshiping the Lord, every once in a while, it is normal to be swept away emotionally, shed a tear out of sheer love for Him. Periodically, we are struck by the awesomeness of God's love and mercy. We rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy because we are being saved through faith. Salvation is a great source of joy for the followers of Jesus. In the midst of the persecution of Nero, the church needed sources of joy. And remembering what God was doing in and for them, the salvation of their souls, brought indescribable, can't put it into words, and glorious joy. Psalm 51, verse 12, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Isaiah 12, verse 3 says, With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And Nehemiah 8, verse 10 says, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. and Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So how do we walk by faith? Words that easily tumble from our lips, but what does it mean? It's not easy to walk by faith. We talk about it like it is easy, but learning to obey the voice of God is not easy. It requires obedience. (laughs) The Bible, says A.W. Tozer, recognizes no faith that does not lead to obedience, nor does it recognize any obedience that that does not spring from faith. The two are opposite sides of the same coin. Like the boy hearing his father's voice through the flames and smoke of his burning house, in order to be saved, he had to jump. But he couldn't see. He could only hear his father's voice. By faith, not sight. Psalm 139, verses 11 and 12 says, If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Have you ever been on a trust walk? We do this a lot in youth ministry, or used to. I don't know if they still do. So much has changed. Rick, do we still do trust walks? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's where one person is blindfolded and then a trusted friend in the youth group guides them around. Trust equals faith. And of course, the trusted friend will purposefully bump them into tables and chairs and it's it's a lot of funny laughter and so forth. But we walk where God leads, trusting that he won't lead us to stub our toe. How do we know the voice of God? and that it's not just a voice in our head. We know that by practicing, by listening, by knowing the scriptures. Did I say listening? And listening. You'll know because you'll recognize his voice. Even if we can't see him, we know Jesus and we love him, and it fills us with joy even in the midst of our day-to-day trials. And if you want a faith like this, if you want to be able to trust in Jesus like this, if you've never given your life over to Jesus, maybe today is the day. Maybe today is the day that you truly trust God to guide you every step of your day. Listen for the voice of God. When he says, turn here, or turn there, or stop there, listen and recognize that voice and practice obedience. That is by faith, not sight. 
Let us pray now and consider how God may be speaking to our hearts today.